back here to take a look at. This will be your big block Chevy Super Victor. Made for a 9.88 deck height. It's a part number 2927. It's a pretty big son of a bitch. Get your 2927 there. It's made pretty much for. Big cubic inch, big block Chevys, or radical big block Chevys. And you could put it on a 396 or a 427 with 13, 14 to 1 compression, and a 280 plus at 50 solid roller cam. It would work fine. On a smaller cute big block but they're generally made for 500 inches and more which they work on 496s and shit real nice they got some big fucking runners on them got a 454 R Victor Jr. here next to it. It's about a 20 year old unit. But you can see the difference in the runner sizes side by side. And that Victor Jr. is a badass intake. Probably more ideal for your 427, 454 cube big block Chevys. But you go rowdy enough with that shit. Go big or go fucking home. Use these big boys on about any of them. I guess intakes advertised it like. 45 or 4,000 to 8,500 where they rate it but it'd take a hell of a big block turn 8,500 so probably 496 I'm working on it'll probably see 7,500 and it should make 800 plus horsepower DNA, no, no turbo needed, no bottle needed, I could spray it with about a 300 shot and hit four digits, drive that motherfucker around if I needed to, look forward to gas in the son of a bitch. Probably gonna switch it over to E85 also. Oh, Edelbrock. 454R Victor Jr. there. Rectangle port. Vic Jr. That was a damn good intake in its day. Still is. Either one of these will support 800 horse, no problem. And more. I'm thinking this Super Victor going to be the one for the 496 build. Shot. Straight shot.
shot at them fucking runners. Pretty well cast. That one inch spacer fits on there. It only needs just a touch taken off the top of the intake to give it a good blend. Which I'll probably end up with a two inch spacer. Give me a way overpriced motherfucker. HVH or some shit. One of them. The old Super Victor. Big block Chevy. You don't want to waste your time building no mild shit. You won't find no Edelbrock performers in my intake collection for big block Chevys. Every every single one of them's a big fat motherfucker. But you know, you gotta build a big block Chevy fucking need to make some power or you might as well just stick with a small block. I got plenty of choices here. Whichever way whatever that engine ends up needing we got something for them. So I'm currently back piecing together three big block Chevys. One's a 427, 60 over. Others a 496. And the others a 454 that will probably end up as a 468. Got it in an RV and I'm going to have a big dome set up. 60 over 454 pistons sitting on a shelf, so I'll try and end up sticking them in that RV engine. It's a 4 bolt 454 in an RV. But I got an intake for each one of them. This is going to be the 496 unit here. I might go in there and blend them fucking dividers. Just a touch. Thin them out a little bit. I ain't going to get too fucking carried away. It really won't make much of a difference. But if it gets a few horsepower, it's a few more than it had. Long to get in there and grind on that shit. It's not that, not that complicated. It's not rocket science. I got my old faithful Perry Grant Dominator. The red butterflies. Them fuckers are two and an eighth inch. This thing is like a 1275 CFM mid 90s Barry Grant Dominator. Pretty trick fucking carburetor for its day. I'll run some pretty low ETs with it. Got your big block intakes pretty much fucking covered here. That's going on the tall deck 427 there. Big bow tie bastard. Probably I'm on the 
put a couple of turbos on that engine see how stupid it can get I like to get it up about 14 1500 fucking horsepower with a blow through dominator if I did go fuel injection I'd have to go with a, a Ron's flying toilet or a fucking enduro bird catcher or a hillborn I just ain't much on this modern EFI that's shit's it's definitely got its advantages in many ways but people been going fast for a long fucking time without them and less electronics on my shit the better off I feel about it less shit that can go wrong these old carburetors they're you can get them figured out they're pretty fucking easy to maintain and make changes to for atmospheric conditions and temperature changes and shit it's really not that fucking complicated. But a lot of people fear the carburetor these days because they've never actually stuck their hands in one and fucked with them. But they're really not that complicated. They definitely ain't going away anytime soon. They still developing brand new badass carburetors to this very day, so I'm sure if they were a dead end that was going to be obsolete next year, these companies wouldn't be spending millions of fucking dollars developing new ones. So like it or not, the old fucking carburetor, the old fuel leak, gonna be around for a minute that's your super victor big block chevy 9.8 deck intake pretty good piece